Hello, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we will be tasting a beer that almost wasn't. Uh, back in April, before we went to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, we brewed this beer called a Strawberry Melon Ball Milkshake New England IPA. Very long. We just call it the Melon Ball. Anyway, we brewed That's this... What you call it. <laughs> That's what I call it inside my... Well, again, it was almost wasn't. So we were both kind of laid down in May. She not feeling well. Me not... Uh, me laid up with a bad back. And when you have a bad back, racking beer is a challenge. So it took a while before I was able to attend to it. And it was the first time I've used fruit in a beer. And I just wasn't sure what was going to happen. And I came about that close to pitching the whole thing and saying, you know, I don't know if I want to bother. It was intended to be bottled. And the compromise I kind of made up in my head was that I was going to go ahead and keg it. We had an empty keg. Let's see what that does. Try it. We don't spend a lot of time on bottling and see how it goes. Right. So, Because bottling is a lot more labor intensive. You have to sanit wash and sanitize all the bottles, fill all the bottles individually, blah, blah, blah. You feel like that's more work. I mean, I don't have a sense because I don't really help when you do the keg prep stuff. It's different work, and mm -hmm. this is a three-gallon batch, so this is the first time also that I've done a three-gallon batch, as well as the first time with working with fruit beer. I just thought with three gallons, it's really about half as labor-intensive to do a bottle, and it would be good for small batches, and it would allow you also to kind of taste it over time. So it really does depend on what your, your kind of final intention is for it. Right, but I'm... Okay. So you were thinking that the three-gallon batch is good because if you don't like the beer, obviously you don't have as much of it on hand, and sure. you can maybe give it away to friends who would like more of it or something if you bottled it. But the difference between kegging and bottling, you think time-wise that's less? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, less exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so especially if you clean as you go and you keep things sanitized as you go, then yes, moving something to a keg is going to take significantly mm -hmm. less time. Mm -hmm. Labor and can probably be done by one person, whereas... You know, I was gonna say it's no time for me, so it's definitely easier for me if you keg something. <laughs> yeah, if you've watched previous videos about brewing, you see that Sarah really kicks it in uh, by helping with the bottling process, and it does save a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. um, from her point of view, it's zero time to do the keg at least this time. I kind of surprised her. I wasn't sure I was gonna keep this beer. Mm -hmm. I told you I would might pitch this beer, and, and I then... was kind of like, no, don't pitch it. <laughs> Like, ready to dive in front of the bucket, like, <laughs> as he holds mode. it over the sink, like, I'm going to pour this out. No! <laughs> so, anyway, we decided to go ahead and see how it does. And we're now at about a week under carbonation in the kegs. Mm -hmm. And this is the um, Strawberry Melon Ball Milkshake New England IPA. Mm -hmm. And if you want me to explain, I will, but you'll be able to find a link to the recipe in the description or the comments or the area below. And you can leave a comment as well if you want to brew it. It's quite, quite cloudy. crazy. You can't see anything. Now that's one of the two, one or two of the ingredients in here. This has both lactose and it also has flaked oats. Now the flaked oats are going to give it that kind of cloudiness as well. It mm. also intended to give it a little bit more body to stand up to the fruit and everything else. Right. So it's a little. Okay. So hang on. Oh. So the nose, I would say, just smells IPA-like. I get a lot of strawberry. I don't, but it may be because I just tasted it. I don't know. I don't get any strawberry off the nose, but I feel like my sniffer doesn't always work that I, well. I get a lot of that. Honestly. A lot of strawberry off the nose. It's both sweet and sour. Mm-hmm. It's not meant to be a sour beer. Let's no. just clarify that. It's not a sour style. But we did use real strawberries, not strawberry flavoring. So mm -hmm. you're going to get, you know, straw if you eat a raw strawberry, they can be sweet, but they also have a tartness Correct. to them. Correct. And because some of the, would you say some of the strawberry sugars have been fermented by the yeast in the secondary, so that brings the sugar count down. Correct. So then you're going to get more of that tart strawberry flavor than Agreed. the sweet. Agree. Strawberry shortcake kind of thing. Right. Uh, but there also is some added uh, organic cane sugar uh, to kind of boost the ABV a little bit without making it too much thicker because I already had the oats as mm -hmm. well. That's so in the primary brewing process? Yes, exactly. The sugar? Yeah. Exactly. So, but, so again, but then again, that's going to get fermented. Yeah. So that will enhance the mouthfeel, the thickness, the mm -hmm. 
coating ability, whatever, but not the sweetness. So this is not a sweet beer, I no. would say. No, it, but is it is slightly tangy, but it's not it's not sour like a sour beer style. Right. And so this is all my own doing. A milkshake style does seem to tra traditionally be a lot sweeter. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, this is the first time I've used fruit in a beer, and it was the first time I designed a recipe myself using lactose. Mm -hmm. So as the brewer, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't reach my goals to be a little bit more uh, sweet. A little, mm -hmm. I went some more of the vanilla, which I'm not getting any of. Um, I was really hoping to get See, more I I strawberry. Smell, I smell the vanilla more than I taste it, I think. True. And that's that's really what you're kind of expecting, but I was really hoping for a little bit more on the, mm -hmm. on the mouth. Yeah, I was expecting it to be a little bit sweeter, just based on some of the commercial milkshake beers. So, so we've talked about this a little bit, but let's review. So the milkshake beer, the reason it's called that is it comes from um, milk stout, right? And having the lactose in there. No, it was just the t style of beer that it was primarily linked with. Most right. people would, you would add lactose to them. And then, and then people branched out and said, okay, what else can we add lactose to to give it that milky, creamy quality, but not in a stout style of beer. And so now they're adding it to all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. We've tasted a few. I think we've even tasted some on camera um, of the commercial style beers, and they tend to be quite, um, what would you call that, quite uh, grain forward or quite, quite malt forward. Mm -hmm. And this one definitely has more tang to it. But I like this, especially on a hot day. You don't necessarily want something that's like, high alcohol, high malt, you want something that's a little tangy to kind of quench your thirst. I was just going to say the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this does. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but to no, finish up, that's what I was going to say. So as the brewer, I'm a little disappointed I didn't reach those goals, but I'm still glad I didn't throw this away because it does have other qualities that still make mm -hmm. it quite drinkable. Absolutely. And there's nothing like spoiled or off to me about this. It may be a little mm -hmm. past its peak freshness, mm -hmm. but there's certainly, you know, I know you were worried because you had lost pressure on the fermentation vessel. Mm -hmm. So we weren't sure if like the airlock was okay and therefore bacteria could have been getting in. And yep. it doesn't seem like any of that happened. So. Yeah. Again, I don't, I have a lot of experience drinking other people's quality fruit beers, but this is the first one I've done on my own. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this is again just my part of my learning curve as mm -hmm. a pretty much a beginner brewer. Yeah. So, but you can always drink even things you might consider mistakes and things you might consider mistakes might be something that somebody else uh, enjoys a great deal and is glad right. says they're glad you didn't throw it away. Well, I'll I'll, I'll even tell a story on uh, Scott Russell who we've had on the channel before, and he tells the story on himself. He was brewing uh, a brown ale for entry and competition had it sitting next to his little tabletop um, compost bucket. Didn't realize that some of those interesting compost uh, microbiome things had gotten into his brown ale and soured it. So he tasted it and he said, okay, I'm gonna enter this in, it was either a sour category or an open category. Mm -hmm. And he got like second place for it, you know? And <laughs> so it may not be exactly what you intended, but that, yeah. it, like Rick said, it can be still very good. You can drink your mistakes because most of the time the alcohol is going to kill anything in there. Nothing's really mm -hmm. likely to happen other than it might taste different. So as long as it's something that taste isn't off-putting to somebody, mm -hmm. drink your mistakes. Yes, absolutely. Don't waste beer. Um, I almost did. No. Uh, I should. Can, can we talk a little bit more? We, we don't sure. have to go step by step about the recipe, sure. but um, a little bit more. So this was, you were sort of doing it to test also your... Exactly what I was going to say. Your yeah. IPA. The, yeah, the uh, opportunity, the photo right. opportunity. So if you look at the links below, you can probably find the video uh, that we did for that beer. And with that beer, I explained that it was kind of a test beer for this beer. Mm -hmm. And so I was testing the basic malts of the, uh, what is it? Let me look here. Great Western for the two rows, some faucet pearl, and some honey malt, and that was kind of the backbone of photo opportunity. And then with this one, I added the lactose, the flaked oats, and a little sugar. Mm -hmm. So the other one was kind of to test the backbone of the beer and then see where we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Before you add specialty ingredients or expensive ingredients, um, in this case, our local 
co-op had a sale on organic strawberries and so I jumped at the chance even though we weren't ready to brew that beer on that weekend that I found them I texted Rick real quick and I was like how many strawberries do we need for the recipe and he, he told me that I got I think two quarts of strawberries for this is mm -hmm. what it, about what it worked out to um the bigger size kind of plastic flip top container and uh quickly um just uh chopped the leaves off trimmed them by hand and threw them right in the freezer so that they, we could make use of those when we were ready. Right. So I cooked those down, just got them at least above 140 and uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit and cooked that down just to kind of make it a syrup, uh, pushed that through a strainer and then added that to the secondary. So it was mm -hmm. after all the malts had started to ferment and the alcohol was already there. It wants to be below the surface and then you're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, safely add these other fruits to it without worrying about them going bad or getting an infection. Right, or, or going moldy. If you had fruit right. sitting above the level of the beer, um, you might, or if you hadn't heated it up properly, you Correct. might be able to introduce some that would grow mold. Mm -hmm. But you can visually see that, so you sure. know that you're not going to drink that. Right, but with this method in it, then most of what we did eventually quickly sank to the bottom and mm -hmm. then add there with the, as, as the hops did the same. Right. Yeah. But it again, it's not what we were intending, mm -hmm. or what I was intending. Um, but I'm still pleased with it. It's enough. I like it enough that I'd like to try and make it again under more uh, controlled circumstances, mm -hmm. and uh, really monitor it and try not to uh, let it sit for another month longer than it really should have. What um, changes to the recipe, if anything? I'm putting Rick on the spot. I didn't mm -hmm. tell him I was going to ask this question ahead of time. Would you change like the grain profile or? Yeah. Add more sugar or anything like that, maybe? Yeah. To make I, it yeah, I think I might add more sugar. Uh, have Even though there was only like a quarter pound of flaked oats, I'm not sure I would bother with that. It's not really adding that much to the body, at least on this scale. Um, the lactose is about the same, a quarter pound. You really kind of have to do that. I would, yeah, I think more sugar. I think I might even do is cook sugar into the strawberries when I'm cooking them at oh, that time interesting. almost make a jam mm -hmm. that would allow a strawberry it jam because you would add another shot of sugar that way too right, right yeah so you know it's something of interest and obviously I, I wish we had some strawberries I would have served it with a little slice of strawberry on the side of it <laughs> um but you know hey Wimbledon is just finishing up uh, I think today so oh, right. uh, good strawberries, strawberries and, and cream. Creamy <laughs> milkshake beer. There you go. <laughs> so to our uh, visitors from abroad, uh, or at least from England, uh, there you go. Yeah, that's funny. Cool. Well, if you uh, are interested in beery events and you want to come up to Vermont, we wanted to give a shout out to NanoFest, which is happening October. Nope. Nope. August, August 17th. Sorry. August 17th. In Vermont at the Tunbridge Fairgrounds, you can uh, just Google NanoFest Vermont and you will find the links. You can buy tickets online ahead of time. Um, it's a great event. What I like about it is you don't, you, so as part of your entry fee, you pay your entry fee and you get your tasting glass with that. And I think maybe a couple of tickets, but you basically buy tickets as you go. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you're not going to drink a lot, um, you can just buy a smaller number of tickets. You're not, you don't feel obligated to have a huge amount. Um, and they also have entry for designated drivers. I was just going to say the same thing. Um, so if you don't drink at all, or you want to come and listen to the music or hang out at our beautiful fairgrounds locally here in Tunbridge, mm -hmm. uh, you can get a, a different price and be able to enjoy that experience without drinking. Right. And they have activities for children as well. Um, they allow dogs. So, you know, as long as your party is all well behaved, um, you're welcome to come uh, come hang out, um, even if you're not drinking. And uh, we've been every year that it's been going, and it's been great fun. And I'm so glad that Anne and Ben of Brockle Bank, they're the main organizers and sponsors, um, are putting this on again because it's a great resource to have for our small area and the small villages that are all kind of in this region together. Um, and and we've you, all, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we've also interviewed a couple of the brewers that come. I was going to say that. So we interviewed Ben and Ann on the channel, and we also uh, interviewed um, Mike Zock, uh, who runs... Bent Hill Brewery. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and uh, so if you're interested in that interview, um, just search back on the channel for that. Interview. Plus Andy and Chris from Upper Pass. Oh, that's right. Andy so and Chris from Upper Pass. Yeah. I believe they're going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. And Brocco Bank and Upper Pass recently released another version of their Together We Can. Uh, so also look for that if you're local. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be at the Nano Fest at the Tombridge Fairgrounds on August 17th, not sponsoring us, we just want to support our local beer community. <laughs> um, please look at us. Say hi. I uh, recognize these mugs and say hi and uh, we'd like to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can give us beer tips or we can give you beer tips on some of the things that are going on. Um, I know that a lot of the brewers tend to brew special beers for this event or introduce new varieties of beer um, to their lineups for this event. So again, it's a good way for them to get feedback um, on these recipes and for all of us to be able to try something new. So check that out. Agree. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for mm -hmm. our tasting of the Strawberry Melon Ball Milkshake New England IPA. Gotta uh, come up with a shorter name for that. <laughs> well, it's not that big. It's what, 6.6%, so it's not huge. It is kind of, you know, it's not like it's uh, something you can go roll off your tongue after a couple of them, but sure. <laughs> well, what did you just put? S M M B M I P A M I P A <laughs> on the tap handle, which will include a photo as well somewhere <laughs> in this video. So thanks for joining us. Please come back. Uh, do click on the subscribe and the notification bell in order to be notified if new videos or when new videos come out every Monday. Thanks. Absolutely. Cheers. Everybody. Cheers.